Light pollution, bad weather, astronomical seeing, and breaking a promise I made to myself eight years ago. All of this and more in today's episode of Widow's Astro Forum. So today I want to talk about the environmental challenges related to astrophotography and how this ultimately drove me to breaking a promise I made to myself eight years ago. All right, let's go. So the first major challenge is of course light pollution. Here's a map of Northwestern Europe and I live in Utrecht, the Netherlands, that's close to Amsterdam. As you can see on this map, it is a red zone. And depending on the apps I check, I'm in border class seven to eight. And we see this kind of light polluted skies all across the major urban areas in Northwestern Europe. And here's a light pollution map of the east coast of the United States and Canada that suffer from similar amounts of light pollution. Now, just imagine what cities would look like without any light pollution. We would be able to see thousands of stars and of course the Milky Way. Now that's a beautiful dream, but I guess the problem will probably get worse and not better. So if you live in one of these urban areas, you're going to have to deal with this when doing astrophotography. Luckily, we have come up with several ways to combat light pollution in urban areas. For instance, we can use narrowband and broadband filters to block out parts of the light spectrum that are most heavily affected by urban light pollution. And post-processing software like Gregspert and dynamic background extraction have made it possible to extract most of the light pollution from our photos after capturing an object. And this actually allowed me to get into astrophotography and get acceptable pictures from my balcony in the city. But using filters will never replace doing astrophotography under a truly dark sky. So if you have the opportunity, go to a dark site. And if you happen to live there, seriously consider getting into astrophotography and I want to visit your backyard. So the second major challenge is the weather. I live in the Netherlands and for the past years it has become worse. I had only a handful of clear nights from November to March this year and the weather seems to be getting more extreme with heavy rainfalls in winter and more extreme high temperatures in summer. And I'm not even talking about the fact that our country is actually below sea level. Now, if you live in places like, like Spain, Texas or Arizona, you'll probably have two to three times as many sun hours per year as I do. And one of the few countries we can actually beat in this respect is the UK. And that's probably why you see so many folks from the Netherlands and the UK on websites like Cloudy Nights. So the third major environmental challenge is astronomical seeing. So let's assume we have clear skies across the globe without any light pollution. Ah, I know, I know, this isn't possible, but let's imagine this for a moment. Then still the place where you do your astrophotography will greatly influence the pictures you'll end up with due to what is called astronomical seeing. So, when you look up at the night sky, you have about 100 kilometers of atmosphere above you before you get to space. And actually, when I think of this, this kind of blows my mind. Only 100 kilometers. You can drive that distance in less than an hour by car. But I'm getting off topic here. So you want that 100 kilometers of atmosphere to be as quiet as possible. But unfortunately, we have to deal with what is called atmospheric turbulence. And this already starts with streets and rooftops emitting heat after a hot day. And up to about two kilometers, we also have to deal with air flows that move in different directions due to their interaction with the landscape. Now, interestingly, if you can get above those one or two kilometers, your astronomical scene conditions will be greatly improved, which is why all the great professional telescopes are built on mountains in Chile or on top of volcanoes on islands like Hawaii or Tenerife. So it's like I said, the average astronomical seeing in the Netherlands or in fact any other place at sea level like London or New York, even during the best night, they will have a seeing condition of about one arc second. And this is about three to four times worse than in mountainous areas like Tenerife or Cerro Paranal in Chile, where the very large telescope is placed. Now, all of this info is actually a way for me to say 
Sorry for breaking a major rule I vowed myself never to break. So again, in my defense, I only had five clear nights for the past six months. And during these months, I did reprocess some of my old astro photos. And I tried to give you guys some insight into the world of smart telescopes by testing them on my YouTube channel whenever I had a one or two hour clear patch of sky during the past months. And I actually thought about building an observatory on my rooftop in the Netherlands, but with the bad weather and the poor astronomical seeing conditions, I finally decided to do what is actually forbidden by diehard backyard astrophotographers. And that is, I purchased some data. Yeah, I have to admit it, I purchased some astrophotography data from Telescope Live. So most of you probably know this, but Telescope Live is a company that built some great observatories in some awesome dark sky locations in the south of Spain, in Chile, and in Australia. And they also have the best super high quality astrophotography gear that I could never afford, like this Officina Stellare 70 centimeter aperture Ritchie Crencia telescope, which costs about $85,000. So after many months of bad weather this year, I finally cracked and I created an account on their website and I bought two bundles of their astro images. Now, as we are currently in galaxy season, I bought some raw data of the famous Whirlpool galaxy taken by that 70 centimeter aperture Ritchie Crencia telescope positioned on a mountaintop in the south of Spain. And I also bought some raw data of a beautiful barred spiral galaxy called NGC 1365, which I actually cannot observe from the Netherlands. It was captured in Chile in Rio Hurtado Valley at about 1500 meters of elevation. And the telescope used was a 61 centimeter aperture corrected Dahl Kirkham telescope, which costs about $130,000. Now, I would recommend using Telescope Live if you already have a good understanding of processing mono astrophotography images using different filters. So you kind of understand the raw data that is available for you to process on their website. Now, obviously this isn't a complete review of their services. Uh, please let me know if you want me to make one, but yeah, if you want to use their services, I have put a link in the video description to their website that should give you a nice 20% discount if you do decide to sell your soul <laughs> as a backyard astrophotographer and sign up. So let's end by showing you the difference between my attempt to capture the Whirlpool Galaxy from my balcony with an Edge HD 8 inch telescope, so from an urban area, and I will show you the processed picture I was able to create from that raw data of that 70 centimeter aperture telescopes uh, on a mountaintop in the south of Spain. And of course, I'll also show you that barred spiral galaxy that was captured in Chile by that 61 centimeter aperture telescope. And of course, um, I'll make both pictures available in full resolution for all you wonderful people who financially support me by joining my YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much and see you in the next video.